it was a hot day. It was like a beautiful summer's day. And then I just heard this enormous roar. My name is Heathcliff O'Malley. I've been at the Telegraph for 24 years working as a photographer. And I was in New York on 9-11. That morning I was in my hotel room editing some photos from a fashion show from the night before. I mean, in fact, on that New York Fashion Week, I shouldn't have been there. The other photographer should have been there. And the phone rang and the deputy picture editor said, a plane has hit the World Trade Center. Can you go and have a look? Almost in a sort of casual way, really. It wasn't like in this, you know, oh my God, this awful thing's just happened. And I thought, well, maybe it's a Cessna or a light aircraft. And I phoned my um, fashion editor, who was a couple of rooms down the corridor and said, look, I've been asked to go down to the World Trade Center. And she was like, do you think you could send your show pictures first and I was like no I think I better just head down and just see what's going on. I went down to the hotel lobby called for a taxi and as we're driving down I start to see smoke from the towers and I was thinking well I better stop so I can get a, a sort of general view shot before I get closer. So I got out of the taxi and I was on West Broadway it seemed quite calm, but people were sitting on like the roofs of cars and some had binoculars, some were eating sandwiches or drinking a coffee. And, and at that point, there was smoke pouring out of the tops of both the towers. Still had no idea what had happened. And as I got closer, people started to look more distressed about what was going on. I don't know if it was a roar or a rumble, it was just this enormous noise. And as I got closer, groups of people were gathering and some were crying, some were pointing. And people were being brought through by emergency workers. I bumped into this woman. She was looking quite distraught and said, can I borrow your phone? My father works in the towers and I can't get hold of him. And I said, I'm really sorry, but my phone doesn't work. I showed her, I said, my phone hasn't got any signal. It's not working. And she was like, oh, thank you. I hope you get some good pictures. Which, you know, it just felt really strange. And I carried on and came across another cord and they were bringing some people through and they brought a woman through and were taking her to the ambulance. So I turned around to photograph her being looked at by some paramedics. And then I just heard this another enormous sound. <laughs> All hell broke loose. Everyone started running. And then as I turn around, there was just this enormous ball of dust. The dust was very thick. It was burning my skin. It was everywhere, pa paper and dust just sort of hanging in the air as I went around, um, and it was obscuring my vision. <coughs> there was lots of rubble around, and it sounds pretty silly now, but there was this um, Kubrick film called Full Metal Jacket, and they had like flames sprouting out of the ground and stuff, and I thought, this is so bad. As I started to pick my way through the rubble, I saw little flames come up and it just reminded me of that film. It felt like I was on a film set, not somewhere real. And I thought, well, I've got to go forward. And I was just very close to the North Tower and there were two bridges that crossed over the West Street Highway. And it was the the North Bridge that had been hit by the North Tower collapsing and the whole thing was, you, you couldn't go any further, it was like a dead end of rubble. 
and the firemen were caught in that corner of the bridge and their engines were crushed by the bridge falling over on top of it. And I just worked the scene as much as I could. There was a um, picture of one of the firefighters walking away from the rubble with the partially crushed fire engine behind him and he's walking towards me and with the scene around him. There's another shot of one of the firefighters who's sitting in shock, not working at that point, covered in dust. He's got a pair of black rimmed glasses on and he was sitting next to another guy who was sort of had his head in his hands. And I photographed one person who was by an ambulance. I'm not too sure if he was an ambulance worker or not, but he had a white shirt on and suit trousers and he was covered in dust. He had a mask hanging down and he had blood on his shirt. It wasn't his blood, it was somebody else's. And he looked, I guess what you'd call a thousand yard stare, but he, he, he was clearly in shock. And I photographed him and it was one of the main pictures they used in the paper the following day. And then I ran out of card space on my cameras. I just started thinking, well, I've got to get back because I can't shoot anymore unless I delete stuff. And I'm going to have to get these pictures into the paper because otherwise there's just no point. You know, I'd have wasted the time. So I started picking my way through and I bumped into one of the photographers that I know that shoots the catwalk. And she looked really concerned. And I guess at that point I was covered in dust and whatever. And, and she um, flagged down a, a car who um, agreed to take me back up to Midtown to my hotel. Everybody on the street, on the other side, start walking north. I'm pretty sure I must have turned the TV on when I got back. And then it was just rolling. New York City is in shock. One of its most famous landmarks destroyed, thousands dead, and America is under siege. I went and sat down started picking through my pictures, phoned the desk, and the first thing the picture editor said was, thank God you're still alive. And yeah, I guess it, you know, maybe at that point it began to sink in. All you hear was this rumbling, people was crying. It was just uh, the most horrible thing I've ever seen in my life. Now, after New York, I went to Afghanistan and I lived with the Afghans fighting the Taliban. But it wasn't until a year later I was re-editing my pictures and I started to cry and I phoned a friend of mine, an American friend, and he said you were probably in shock for 12 months and you're only just beginning to process it. After that, friends of mine were like sort of, oh, you're, you've changed and whatever and I, I guess I didn't see it at first but I, I guess now I have to accept that I have. I've never been in contact with anybody I photographed that day. I know others who have. I wonder to this day about the woman who asked to use my phone. You know, did her father survive? Yeah.